Annie, knowing a bit about your background, you would never think that you would come to faith in Jesus. What was your moment with him? Well, that was a, an amazing moment. Um, I had a dream and he came in my dream and he was face to face with me and he put his hands upon me and he healed me. Really? And I knew it was him. But where did you come from to get to this moment knowing that it was him? I mean, how, how did that happen? Well, I was sick and I needed a healing. And um, I, I asked God, the Creator, to heal me. And that night, I went to sleep after I spoke to the Father. And then this dream came. Okay, so, so Jesus shows up mm -hmm. and you have to do something with him, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're calling out to God and he gives you Jesus. And you wake up and what happens? It happened that I thought that I was losing my mind. Okay. And that uh, I said, but God, I spoke to you. How is it? <laughs> that you sent Jesus. Yeah. What is he doing in my dream? Right. So why was that so surprising to you? Because I, I knew it was him and I didn't understand why I knew it was him. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your background then. Yeah. Uh, I was born in Venezuela, a very Catholic country. Okay. And no one ever spoke to me about Jesus. No one. And your, your family is Jewish? Yeah, so my father grew up in a, a yeshiva in an orphanage, a Jewish orphanage okay. in Morocco. Okay. And my mother, uh, in, in her side, there is a grand-grandfather that was a rabbi. So we were a traditional Jewish family, you know? Uh, my dad didn't want to to have anything to do with the, the religion, very religious. So he, we, were all, we were going every once in a while on Friday to synagogue, mm -hmm. and the closest synagogue was the Chabad one. Right. And so we went there, and that was our life. We were keeping the holidays, mm -hmm. the, the feasts, the Jewish feasts, and that was our life. Yeah, we did that too. So you're growing up in a Jewish environment and you moved around a lot, yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, I have to say that in my mother's side, her full family is in France. Okay. So we were traveling to France maybe once a year to visit them. Mm -hmm. So when the time came to leave Venezuela, uh, because of the political situation, I went to France. Yeah, how, how is it living as a Jew in, in Europe? Well, it's difficult because there is a lot of anti-Semitism. Okay. It was difficult. I didn't allow my son to wear a Star of David. Mm. Yeah, and that, that was our life. Yeah, this is fascinating because you're in an environment that historically and actually currently um, has a lot of anti-Semitism, okay? And you're hiding your Jewish identity, mm -hmm. and yet at some point you have, you're putting your faith in the Christian God, their God, you know what I mean? What happened along the way? Yeah, well, that's a story, you see. I... Yeah, let's have a seat. <clears throat> I was, uh... I was so surprised. I simply didn't know what to do with that evidence that Yeshua came and um, healed me in the dream and I knew it was Him and it was so surprising to me to be healed supernaturally and I didn't know what to do with that mm. because I, I didn't have any background of being in searching for Him or having Christian friends, nothing. Right, actually the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, no exposure, no. living a Jewish life with your family, and then Jesus shows up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happens like that to a lot of us. 
Yeah, I, I, we have heard it, this lately to other people. Yeah, yeah, but you took it deep. You you didn't want to just base this revelation or this healing on how you felt. Mm -hmm. You took it to scripture. Yes, I thought, well, we must be missing something. Mm. And then uh, I remember that I took with me a Bible from my parents' library <laughs> at home when I left Venezuela, because I left ahead of them. Okay. And uh, so I took that Bible and I opened it and I started to read and the more I read, the more I saw him mm. in you the mean, Hebrew Scriptures. In the Hebrew Scriptures, right. Not even the New Testament. No, right. I didn't have any New Testament. So when you mean you took the Bible, you took the, the Tanakh. The Tanakh, absolutely. The Hebrew Scriptures alone. Yes. And you found him in there. Everywhere. <laughs> That's right. From Genesis to the last prophecy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so the more, like me, the more you studied, the greater your faith grew. I absolutely knew that it was him. So yeah, so you the have Messiah. this Okay, so you have this moment, right? You're dreaming. Jesus appears. You wake up. You have to do something with it. What happens the following days, weeks, or months? I couldn't do anything with that because I said I'm losing my mind. I I, I put that aside. Mm. You see, I didn't want to to give too much attention. I even didn't say thank you to God that he healed me. You know, I didn't know what to do with that. So, but you know, when God pursues you, he doesn't give up. Yeah. So 10 months later, I was at home and th uh, there was a knocking on the door. And I opened the door and this lady, that this American lady says, in a very bad French, she says, someone told me there is a Jewish family here, living here, yes. So I, I told her in English, so what? So she said, I came to show you your Jewish Messiah in your Hebrew scriptures. <laughs> like jog to the floor, right? Oh my, so, can I offer you a tea, ma'am? <laughs> So from that moment, she entered and she was the one that brought me a small uh, a pocket uh, New Testament in English yeah. with all the prophecies at the front and all that. And, uh, but we didn't touch it until we read together the Bible, yeah. the whole Hebrew Scriptures. Yeah. So um, there was a certain point where I read in the book of Zechariah. And at that moment, truth was so overwhelming, so overwhelming that I felt on my knees and I received Yeshua in my heart. Wow. And I prayed and cried for four hours. Wow. For the missing, how we did miss. How, how did we miss him? How did we? How we did this to miss him? Yeah. Two thousand years. As a people. Two thousand years lost. Mm. I suddenly I realized, wow, the Gentiles took him because we rejected him. Yeah. So it was was such a pain I cannot describe. It was very difficult to bear that pain, and it. It really took me a long time mm. to stop crying. Wow. I, I, like I, I've said this in previous videos, when I came to faith, it was, it's a similar story. I wept for a year. Every day I wept for a yes, year. Yes, yes. Um, so what about your family, your, your parents? Did you tell them? Oh, absolutely. You know, the next day I called them and I told them, hey, <laughs> listen. Yeshua is the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, the one that we have been waiting for so long. And they thought that I lost my mind. Of course. And, uh, but I knew, I knew that I knew the truth. Yes. And since I knew the truth, it didn't bother me. So wow. that's what I did. I wanted, the truth is that I wanted everybody to know. So I started with my 
parents and uh, and haven't stopped since and haven't stopped since amazing where would where do you think that you would be today if if, if you didn't have Jesus oh my I would be lost I was such a sinner <laughs> I was such a sinner you know? we all? I would be lost yeah completely lost because you know when you're in the world and you're in sin you don't think about the future you don't think about the end of your life, you're so busy with what you're doing and yeah. and what the world is, you know, catching you mm -hmm. to do, to think, to see. Right. Even what, even what religion is doing to us. Oh, absolutely. To catch us, to hold us, yeah. to, that, and what it keeps us away from. There was something that always uh, caused me to ponder when I was going to to synagogue on Friday. And that is, we repeat this prayer about asking God to bring the Messiah quickly. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized, hello, he has already been here. Amen. And we miss him. That's right. So, yes. So, yeah, it's, it's a shock, you know, it's yeah. a shock. What a delightful story. It's all the glory to him because it's his story, it's not my story. Yeah, so what are you doing today? So today, I have the big privilege to serve Yeshua at Jews for Jesus mm -hmm. at Tel Aviv branch in Israel and share my story and share the gospel and share about this amazing, loving, Messiah that we have that gave his life for us and uh, went to that cross. He took my sin, my curses, to give me blessing and to change the curse in a blessing. And he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. And we know we have connection with him because of this, because of what he did. And it's the it's the only place that we have joy and peace mm. that surpasses understanding. Yes, I'm going to speak a little Hebrew right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> amazing. If you didn't know that was Hebrew, wow, yeah. what an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it. And thank you for watching. So after we turned off the camera, Anani updated me that her parents actually came to faith as well. What? <laughs> tell me, tell me about that. Just, just give me the brief. Yes, well, it, it's really amazing. Uh, I made Aliyah with my son, and uh, my son and I uh, shared the prophecies from the Hebrew Scriptures with my parents. And in 2009, they became believers. Ah, Here in Israel. Amazing. Here in Israel. Isn't it amazing because, how God works? Because so my, great. Parents made, my parents made Aliyah before I made Aliyah. So they came to Israel and immigrated before you did? Yes. Wow, so from telling you that you lost your mind to putting their faith in Jesus as well, as Jewish people, what an amazing story. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.